Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. It's a great time isn't it to be an Evertonian. Five games unbeaten, four clean sheets and of course the draw at Anfield. For this week's Everton show I'm joined by a centre forward of the past and a centre forward of the present. Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Graeme Sharp. Dominic, the form is terrific. What a turnaround. Yeah, definitely. I think um, we all knew that this, this day was coming. Um, we went through a tough period at the start of the season and we knew that we just had to stick together and kind of keep, keep grinding it out and it would come together and I think obviously the gaffer's come in and implemented his tactics on the team and I think you can see the benefit it's had and we're, we're performing a lot better now. What's changed, Graeme? What's changed? I think we'll, I think you look at the goal difference now and it's a lot healthier. Okay, it's still in the negative but it's a lot healthier than what it was. I think earlier on in the season we were, we were shipping goals right, left and centre so I think the new manager's come in and, and set us up you know, defensively better. Uh, you know the instructions he's getting to the lads. They look a lot tighter. Uh, they're moving up and not sitting. in especially last night, I saw them moving up. As soon as they cleared the ball, they were up quickly. Whereas earlier on in the season, they tended to lay back. And, you know, and we were conceding goals right, left, and centre. So listen, you have to start with a good base, and he's done that defensively a lot better. Are you enjoying working with Big Sam, Little Sam, and Craig Shakespeare? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, uh, it's it's still early days, but I'm I'm enjoying my football at the moment and. I think obviously it helps when you're winning games and I think like Sharpie said, I think we're a lot more organised now um, defensively and I think it's got a lot to do with confidence. I think yeah. we've, we've drawn confidence from recent performances and I think that's what we're, we're taking into upcoming games. It's a tough and lonely role, isn't it, the lone striker in the Premier League? <laughs> yeah, it's tough at times but I'm young and I'm, I've got the legs so it's got to be done and I think um, sometimes you have got to, got to work away to a win. So. Yeah, like I say, it's got to be done. Sometimes you've got to graft for very little personal, tangible reward when you're a lone striker. Hard, hardest job in football. Uh, I've done it a few times in, in, in my career. Away at Liverpool, remember we were getting stuffed 3-0, hardly got a kick. So it's just one of those jobs that you, you know, listen, the football's changed so much. Nowadays we usually shared the, the responsibility to up top. Dominic's got a lone role, which is the hardest job in football. People expect him to get a hold of it, to get in behind, to get on the end of things. And it's physically impossible because you're doing so much work for the team and it's not an out and out goal scorer. He's chasing balls in the channel, he's setting things up. So it's a really tough job for him. So, you know, he's done extremely well uh, and long may it continue. The likes of Liverpool away at Anfield when we knew we were going to be under the cosh for lar large periods. Do you have the defenders shouting at you saying, Dominic, keep hold oh. of it, give us a break <laughs> for goodness sake. But as Sharpie said, I, it's very difficult. I used to absolutely despise that. You know, <laughs> get a hold of it. That's what you're trying to do. You know, you're up against three guys, so it's yeah. a tough job. And of course, a great period for the football club. Great period for yourself. Congratulations on the new contract, Dominic. Thank you very much. Um, over the moon, moon to be extending um, at this, this great football club. And uh, it's been a, a fast 18 months that I've been at the club, but I'm um, thoroughly enjoying myself and delighted to, to be here. This football club rewards young players when they do the business on the pitch and young players will always get an opportunity at Everton. Well they will do, I think you know the record speaks for itself for the young players that have progressed you know through the ranks, you know Dominic's come in uh, and, and had to bide his time, he was in you know alongside David Unsworth and all the other younger players but you know listen to get anywhere now in fact we've got to work extremely hard, it's a prime example you know he's came into to a club from Sheffield United uh, and just learn his trade, you know, bit by bit, bit, bit by bit, sorry, and then when you get the opportunity to take it, and he's certainly done that. It's been a very busy week for the club secretary mm -hmm. because not only has Dominic Calvert-Lewin put pen to paper on a new deal, so has Mason Holgate, and so has John Joe Kenny. To sign a contract with Everton, um, the club have been that since I was a young lad, and, you know, to extend me career here, you know, made up. The manager's been brilliant as he's come in, um, he told me what I need to do and where to get better, and that's all I can ask for. You know, the lads who are coming through are brilliant as well, and you go, you got Resi the 21s who are coming up as well. We've got some top players, so you know, I think that's all down to the coach, the coaching staff, and you know how they're uh, progressing these kids coming through. I think Everton's a top club. We can go and go and do great things as a team, and you know, if we all stick together. We can go and um, compete at the high level. Yeah, I'm uh, over the moon. It's um, something that you work work hard on when you're working hard. Uh, these rewards come, so it's something I'm really happy for. It's a good time to be be young at Everton. I think obviously you get a lot of uh, chances, and um, every now and again, clubs get a, a, a spurt of you, like the people of the same generation coming through. And hopefully that's what's happening here. There's been faith shown in me, 
So I think the more experience I get, the, the more I'll grow and be able to improve. Just about getting experience for me now and, and learning and playing as many games as possible. How big a help is it for you, Dominic, as a young footballer, finding your way in the Premier League, to have other young footballers doing the same thing, your Tom Davises, your Masons, your John Joes? I think it's a massive help and we, uh, we probably don't realise because I think we've all got quite a close bond um, and I suppose it's quite a unique situation to have so many young players coming through at the same time getting the amount of game time that we do so I think it, it makes it that little bit easier to, to come in every day knowing that, I'm not saying that I'm not mates with the older lads in the team but you know we have that, that different bond and you come in and, and train with your mates every day and you go out on the pitch with your mates and um, it makes it that little bit e easier. What about your background at Sheffield United? Did that help you along the way? Has that helped you now appreciate what you've got here at Finch Farm? Yeah, I'm glad I've uh, I've gone on the route I've gone down. Mm. Um, I've played at League One, League Two, Conference North, and now the Premier League. So um, I wouldn't have had it any other way. And I think the the experiences I've gone through as a young lad playing at those levels has has prepared me for this 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 moment. And um, like I say, it's just uh, them experiences toughened me up and allow me to do what I do now. I think that's the best route to take to you, Sharp. I mean, you, you, you served your apprenticeship in the mm. School of Hard Knocks up in Scotland. Yeah, you do. Listen, a lot of people you know, look at the, the academy system now and say, oh, they're not playing against experienced players, they're playing against kids of their own age. But Dominic's been out there and they've had divisions he's played in. They're mm. really tough and it toughens you up really, really quickly. You get players who you know, are coming to the end of their days, the experience, you know, playing against them, it can help you. Certainly, when I came down and played in the Central League and played in reserve game fixtures, it was against like a... Brian Robson, Kenny Burns, people who were out the first team at the time, whether it be injury or lack of form, and that toughened you up and it made you realise you know, what the football was all about. Sometimes you, you can get go from the academy to there and it's a massive jump, but I think mm. Dominic's done it quite really what he said. He's been at League One, League Two, the, the conference as well. So it's a, it stands you in good stead because let me tell you, in the Premier League now it's a tough, tough league, you know, and, and especially for young players as well. So he's done remarkably well and as I said, before and then to be long, may it continue. It's been a busy schedule, hasn't it, for the players? The fixtures come thick and fast, and as we approach Christmas, that's not going to get any easier. Uh, yeah, for me personally, I, I love playing mm -hmm. playing games, and I love it when they come thick and fast, and whether you win the game, you can't wait to, to get on the pitch again and, and win again, and if, if you, the result doesn't go your way, you can't wait to get on the pitch and put it right. So I think um, I enjoy this time of year when, when games come quick, and yeah, just enjoy it. That's youth talking there, by the way. <laughs> if you ask some of the older players, they'll be like, oh, too many games here, but no, fantastic. Are you getting used to being recognised about the place now when you're out and about, when you're shopping or what have you? Yeah, a little bit now. I mean, from probably off the back of the World Cup mm. um, and it getting like in the newspapers quite a lot and things like that. I mean, I got recognised a little bit more after that, but um, I mean, it is still, still quite um, surreal to get recognised as much as I do, but... Um, it's part and parcel of the game and I can, can only really like take it in my stride. Good job they never had social media when you were coming through Sharpie or mobile phones. No comments. <laughs> <laughs> How pleased were you when uh, England won the World Cup? Daft question to ask a Scotsman, don't look at me like that. But we took so much pride from having five of our lads out there. Exactly. You know, and it was, it was great for the young lads to go there and experience that. You know, that it benefits them in the long term. You know, being involved in big tournaments. You know, hopefully uh, Dominic and the boys can be involved. <coughs> The, 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 the first team, if you like, and the, the national team. Uh, and that's for them all. You know, that's what they've got to aim for. Uh, they've been there uh, and won it. Uh, would I like to see England win the World Cup and senior level? <laughs> I'd have to be very... Uh, <laughs> no, listen, of course, you'll be. Because for the lads, it's fantastic for the players. Any, any young player that goes through the international, thing, uh, international route, it's fantastic. So we wish them all the best. Listen... If you're playing against Scotland, they might not think that, but <laughs> no, he deserves all the credit he gets because that was a fantastic achievement mm. as well. And as you said, it's not just Dom, it's uh, John Joe was outstanding in that as yeah. well. So, you know, fair play to him. How analytical of you of your own performances, Dominic? Are you your own worst critic? Probably, yeah, and I think uh, I always have been. I perhaps put a bit too much pressure on myself at times, but and uh, but that should be because I back myself to, to affect games the way I know I can do and, and score goals and get assists, and whether that be where I've come from or in the Premier League now so I think I think the belief in myself is what's got me to this point and uh, I continue to believe that I can compete at this level. Are you self-critical Sharpie when you look back at your games? I think growing up I think you, you realise what people expect from me and I, I don't know if Dom has a target that he sets out every season to try and achieve so many goals 
Uh, but when I came down here at first, you know, we were made aware of all the players we played in the number nine, uh, and they expected this from me, that from me. So the expectation level was always there. So so Dom will probably be the same. People will remember, or remember this one, remember that one. Uh, but listen, you've just got to take it on your own and just say, this is what I am, this is what I'm about. Uh, go and enjoy your football, work hard, and you will get the benefits. We've seen that already with his progression from where he's come from. But just keep aiming high. You know, that's all you've got. Keep aiming high and you, you will reach your goals. And Listen, within football, you'll have ups and downs. It will happen whether it be injuries or loss of form or whatever. It's how you react to that. And uh, I'm sure we've got no problem whatsoever with it. The young boys sit next to me. Hope you're listening to all this, by the way, Dominic. <laughs> and that's just about it for part one of this week's Everton show. But don't go too far away because in part two we'll follow Wayne Rooney to declare house hospice. And of course we look ahead to Monday night's Premier League visit of Swansea City to Goodison Park. Welcome back to part two of this week's programme. Now it's the time of year where the players go out and about in the local community, making a real difference to people's lives. The Blue Crimbo campaign this year is all about the Everton family and in this lovely piece of film we follow Wayne Rooney and Sharpie to Clare House. Come and meet um, some of the kids and um, the kids families um, and it's nice to come and you know, try and put a few smiles on the kids' faces and, and also on the family's faces, um, especially around Christmas time. It's always great if you can do that and, um, and meet them and make them smile. Yeah, it's something we, we, we try and do every single year. Uh, and we're fortunate enough this year that, that Wayne's came along. He obviously does a, an awful lot with Clare House. So it was great uh, to see him along here again today and obviously all the, all the patients absolutely delighted to see him. Um, Sophia has um, a condition called cocaine syndrome, which is a premature ageing disorder. Um, basically, she'll just age very rapidly. Um, she's got, you know, a shortened life expectancy, um, and she'll just over time lose all skills. You know, she'll she won't be able to walk, and she'll lose her sight and her hearing, and she'll just, you know, get worse over time. To be honest, they just they do. Everything. <laughs> they they give us a break. They um, just we just have so much fun, don't we? Um, they do so much for the boys. Um, they just just make everything a lot easier. Well, Clare House is an amazing place. We focus on the support for the family, the children, creating a memory. You see, there's lots of noise, lots of laughter, and that's what it's all about. At Clare House. I've seen the the work that they do. Yeah, it's incredible, um, not just for the for the kids, but also for the parents of the children and, and the brothers and sisters as well of the children. Um, they really do make a massive difference and help them families a lot, so um, it's important that I to give my support to, to them, but also they, we need to keep trying to raise money because um, the work they do it needs funding. Looked like a, a nice visit, Graham. It was. It's, it's fantastic at this time of the year going over, you know, to to Clare House, and obviously the boys go to Alder Hay, and it's given something back. But Wayne's got a, a tie up with, with Clare House anyway, so he was brilliant, absolutely brilliant, as you'd expect from the players anyway. They go out there and put a smile, you know, in the in the, in the people's face, and that's that's the most important thing, especially at this time of year. It is especially important around Christmas time, and I know the players find it very humbling, Don, when you make these community visits, whether they're for hospitals or hospices or schools or any other community initiative, and it, it's, it's so easy for the boys to put smiles on people's faces, isn't it? Definitely, I mean, it's, it's a happy time of year, and or that's at least what you want it to be, and, and that's the main thing, putting, we're, we're allowed to go and put smiles on people's faces, and that's the most uh, um, humbling thing about, mm. about this time of year, when we go, go and do the visits. What's it like playing alongside Wayne Rooney? It's obviously. Is it a bit, still a bit surreal at um, times? Probably not so much now, but I mean, at times, yeah. I mean, um, when we're celebrating at Anfield, and he's he's not one in, and um, but yeah, he's a good good player to have alongside me. And I mean, as a young striker, he's he's already taught me a lot, and he's hitting some form now, or he has been hitting form, and he's um, 
I'm happy to be supplying him and he's supplying me likewise and I think we've built up quite a good relationship so far and the more we play together it seems to be the more we know where each other are at the moment so yeah top guy to play with. Has Wayne Rooney scored more goals than you thought he would Sharpie? Uh, yeah probably I think because you know Wayne's coming I mean, he'll hate me for saying this but towards the end of his career you think that maybe he drops back deeper and he's not as involved as much but I think the last uh, last few games and the goals he scored this season tells you listen you don't lose the ability that you've had and he's been fantastic what a fantastic footballer and as, as Dom has just said there the ball he put through in the Liverpool derby good run off the back of the defender great pinpoint pass uh, his goal against West Ham you know he's a fantastic player so we shouldn't really be surprised at what we're seeing at this moment in time I know a lot of people raised their eyebrows and thought is this the right move but listen he was coming back to Everton he has still got loads to offer and as Dominic said as well the influence he can have in the young players is incredible not just in the first team level but lower down as well Dominic growing up you know would he think he'd be playing with Wayne Rooney at one stage no Wayne Rooney was like global icon still is you know so to have him back at the football club is massive absolutely massive from the under sixes all the way through he's got a big big part to play Dominic what about the goal against West Ham it's been named as November's goal of the month quite right too you ever seen a better goal than that it's definitely probably the best best goal I've witnessed whilst being on the pitch and that's the quality that he brings to the team and in a, in a crucial point of the in the game and I don't think there is probably many other players that could have produced that bit of quality at that time mm. on the pitch and that's what he's there for. And put your hand up if you thought it was a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a penalty, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, uh, Waz has put the ball in. I've made the run and um, took my first touch. He's took me forward and I just mean, just put myself in between the, the defender <coughs> and the ball as you would and he's come flying in. Felt the contact, so... Who else would you penalty. want to take a penalty at Anfield late in the game? Than the well, listen, he, the one he, he took before, he, the keeper saved it and he headed the, the rebound in. So you're mm. thinking, you go into this game, you're thinking, oh, Wayne, don't miss this one. <laughs> but I think, as he said in his interview, he'd been practising him. He knew what he was going to do. There was a little bit of a delay. Uh, but no, it was a penalty, a stonewall penalty. And, you know, they can complain all they want, but that's over now. And uh, they can talk about all what happened in the game, but, you know, we stuck at it. And as I said, a great ball from Wayne, good run from... From Dominic, uh, penalty was a penalty, and, and we move on from there. So, no, it was a good result for us, but you know we deserved that penalty. It was a big game. So was the Newcastle game, and so is Swansea City on Monday. And this is Ashley Williams' take on facing his former club. Um, you always want to play against your, your old team, and you, that's that's one of the uh, fixtures you'll probably you know look for. Um, so I've been looking forward to this one, especially at home. Um, be nice to see old faces and, and and you know all that and and, and old friends, but. At the end of the day, it's just another game that we want to win and keep a clean sheet and especially at home, uh, keep our momentum going. It seems that Sam Allardyce has come in and started a, a quiet revolution. How has things been? How have things changed? Um, I think that uh, he's just, you know, he's come in and he was he was lively from day one and, and that's what he's like and he's, he's got a big personality um, and that's rubbed off on the lads a little bit and, you know, perked us up and um, he's made things clear, you know, on the pitch what he wants and... It makes your job easier as a player to go out there and, and perform and, and do what he's asking. What's it done to team morale, him coming in? Uh, it's lifted it, you know, it's lifted it massively. I think um, it's a lot a lot happier dressing room and, you know, you saw, you know, last night after the Newcastle game and, you know, in the showers it's lively and on the plane it's a lot, a lot happier and stuff and that's obvious with wins and, you know, clean sheets and, and good performances and, you know, it's just a, a happier place to go to work. As we've said earlier, Dom, the games are coming thick and fast. Swansea City at home, they're struggling, but there's no gimmies in the Premier League, is there? No, nah, definitely not. Every every point you get in the Premier League, you have to work hard for. And me and all the lads are looking forward to the game on Monday. And off the back of uh, recent results, we're feeling a lot more confident. And I think a lot of the time it's about momentum in the Premier League. And we've certainly got that at the moment. So we'll be looking to take that into the game on Monday. And joined by Momentum Sharpie is now expectation. The punters, the Everton punters will be going to go to on Monday night and they'll all to a man and woman be expecting three points. Well yeah and the pressure's on us. You know if Swansea come in and sit behind the ball and make it difficult as we have done in the last two away games, you know they come and do it, the, the pressure is, it mounts you know on us to break them down. Uh, they're not in the best of form at this moment in time but we're at home and as Dominic says confidence is a massive thing in football so we can look forward to this game uh, and hopefully get another three points. How nice is it to be playing on a Monday night just to give yourselves a little bit more recovery after a, after a tough period? 
Um, I suppose, yeah, off, off, off the back of the game on Wednesday, but it don't make really any difference what, what time we play. I don't think um, the, the recovery is pretty similar to what we've, what we've been having, but we'll all be, be ready for the game. One of your early goals was against Swansea. Wasn't it was, it? but that's youth talking again. We talked about <laughs> it before, you know, the recovery time and everything else. But no, listen, I, I played against Swansea, uh, I think it was the first year up. Uh, Bob Latcher was playing for Swansea and scored in the game. I scored at Goodison 3 1. Listen, they're a, they're, a, they're a good football side. Paul Clement at the moment is just struggling a little bit with them, but he's, he's got a decent reputation in the game. So I'm expecting a tough game. It won't be as easy as, uh, as what the supporters will think it'll be. So it'll be a tough game for us Monday, but hopefully we can continue the run. But isn't it nice though, Sharpie, to be looking at the teams ahead of us? Let's see who we can catch in the next couple of weeks, mm. rather than looking at the other teams near the bottom and wondering how they're getting. Well, it is, it is, Dan, but it's still very, very tight. You know, and I think it's important that you keep getting the, uh, the, the points on the board. And if you can do that, we should be okay. It's another busy schedule. It's another big game on Monday. All the best, Dominic. Thanks to Sharpie. Yeah, thanks yeah. to Dominic Calvert Lewin. We've just about run out of time. That's it for this week's programme. Do join us again in seven days' time for another Everton show. You've been watching The Everton Show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you can catch every single future episode.